Hello everybody. Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at unit 5.9, which is something called steady state approximation. So let's get started. All right, so if you remember what we talked about in unit 5.8, we were given reaction mechanisms and with elementary steps and we were given speed information about each elementary step, slow, fast. And what we said was the rate law for the slow, what we call the rate determining step is the rate law for the entire reaction. And that is for the most part true, as long as the slow step the rate determining step is the first elementary step. And if you'll see in front of us, we have a situation where the slow rate determining step is not the first step. So what do you do in that case? Well, I have sort of a method that, that was shared with me and I like, to, I like it, I like to use it. So what I do is I look at the slow step first and I highlight the reactance of the slow step and any elementary step above it. Okay, let me say that again. And you only have to do this if the slow step is not the first elementary step. So what do you do? What I do is I draw a box or highlight, whatever, the reactance of the slow step and everything above it entire elementary steps, reactants and products, whatever is above it. Now, if I look at what's in this box that I have shaded here, and I think just about what's in that shaded region, and I say, okay, what can I cancel out just in that shaded region? I see an intermediate that I can get rid of, NOBR2. I can cancel that out. Okay, and here's the deal. If I am asked to find the overall balanced equation, because that's the first thing that they've asked us to do, let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm gonna write from both reactions, what have I, what is left after I've canceled everything out? 2NO plus BR2 yields 2NOBR. That's nothing new. We've done that a few times before. There is my overall balanced equation. But then it also says, what is the rate law? And that's where this shading comes into play. So I shaded the reactance of my slow step and everything above it, and I canceled out anything that I could within that shaded region. If you were then asked to write the rate law for this whole reaction, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna write the rate law like, just like you would for the slow step, but for anything left in that shaded region. Okay, so I can see in this shaded region, there are two nitrogen monoxides. So watch, I'm gonna write rate equals K prime, like a K and a little apostrophe, because the rate constant here, it's not going to be K1, it's not going to be K2, it's, it's something different. Okay, it's, it's another K, and we just call that K prime. There's two nitrogen monoxides, so NO squared, and again, what's, what's left in that shaded box? One BR2, so I'm going to give it an exponent of a 1. Okay, there, are, there were two nitrogen monoxides, which is why I put an exponent of 2 there. There was only one bromine, which is why I gave it an exponent of 1. And ladies and gentlemen, that is my rate law. And I had to do this shading area. That's, that's the method that I use. I only had to do that because the slow step was not the first elementary step. Okay, so let's look at another one. 
Okay, another example. We are given a reaction mechanism that has two elementary steps. I can see that the second step is the slow step, which is an alert. Hey, I gotta use that boxing out technique, that shading technique. All right, they've already given us the overall balanced equation, which we could get, no problem. Okay, so since the slow step is second, I'm gonna shade the reactions of my slow step and everything above it. And I want you to look, guys, just in that shaded region. Do you see anything that I can cancel out? I see something. I see that I can get rid of that O gas. So let's look at what's left. On the reactant side, in that shaded area, I've got two O3s, okay? So I'm thinking about my rate law here. My rate law is gonna have a coefficient or an exponent of two for O3. And then this is kind of weird. In that shaded region, I'm left with something on the product side. And we typically don't include products in a rate law but this is a unique situation that's called steady state approximation. Watch what happens. This is what my rate law looks like, okay? I have said rate equals K prime, prime because it's not gonna be K2, it's not K1, it's not K negative one, it's just, it's a new K. So K prime, O3, has an exponent of two, because there are two of them. And anything in that shaded region that is left over on the product side, it's put in the denominator. And I know that's kind of weird, but steady state approximation itself is kind of weird. Okay, and if you think about it, guys, what that means, having that, that value in the denominator, think about if you were to increase the molarity of O2. It would actually make the speed, the rate, go down. It's what in biology we, they would call an inhibitor. If you increase the amount of O2 because it's in the denominator, that would actually cause the reaction to slow down. But again, the only reason that that is in the denominator is because in this shaded region, O2 was left over, not canceled out, and it was on the product side. So let me just say one more time, okay? You only have to do that boxing out technique or shading in that region if the slow step is not the first step. If the slow step is the first step, then just write the rate law for the rate determining step and you're done, okay? But you need to use that method if the slow step is the second or third or fourth elementary step, okay? So I hope you've learned a little something today and I look forward to seeing you next time.